everybody. So today I decided I was gonna give you a conclusion to my timeline of how the fuck I came to Korea video. The video was called Brainstorming Korea. And this is kind of the conclusion, the uh, explanation of what happened. Before I get into that though, hello, my name is Janice and I make videos on topics such as travel, learning languages, learning Korean. I used to make videos talking about living in Switzerland, what's it like, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be changing now. I'm technically still making videos talking about my eating disorder or rather my eating disorder recovery. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure if, you know, if this stuff is changing. Things are happening, things are changing, and it's kind of a bit of a whirlwind right now. But if you want to be a part of that whirlwind, why not stick around? If any or all of that sounds interesting to you, you can stick around till when I make a new one because, yeah, you know. Why not? It's a pun. It's still gross. On the video titled Brainstorming Korea, I pinned a comment saying that if you had any questions regarding the video or like anything in general or about my stay in Korea, please let me know and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. I've written all of the questions down and before I get into that, I'm going to be doing a general kind of update. So who, when, where, what, how and the conclusion. Okay, let's get into that. Okay, so who? Currently, it's just me. A few of my friends have said that they would like to join me, but they are not exactly sure how or when. So for now, it's just me. If anything changes, you will probably see it. <laughs> but yeah, for now, it's just me. When? I arrived on the 23rd of May in 2019, and I will be staying until... I don't know. Basically what my thought is, is that I will be doing visa hopping. So basically after three months of being able to stay in Korea, I will pop over to Japan for a day or two and then come back. I don't know about the legalities of it, to be honest, but I did message the Korean embassy in Switzerland. They basically implied that that was the best idea. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. If there's any problem with that, I will be able to show the email from the Korean embassy. So I have some validity. Basically my idea is that I will be staying in Korea for as long as I have money. If I run out, then I will go back to Switzerland but my hope and dream is to at least stay for a year which I know it's doable especially because I don't have to pay for rent but I will get to that it's definitely gonna be a year if not longer because I've rented out my apartment in Switzerland to another person for a year like the soonest date I can go back to that apartment is August in 2020 so where? I am currently in Daegu, which is one of the biggest cities in Korea. I think it's the third or the fourth biggest city. It might be the fifth. I'm not entirely sure. I've heard conflicting information regarding that. Daegu isn't exactly a touristy hotspot, but I actually quite like that. I like it that there's not a lot of like touristy things to do. Daegu has more of a hometown sort of feel, whereas Seoul kind of really feels like a touristy spot. <laughs> of course, there's like quiet areas in Seoul too, but a lot of the time there's kind of touristy stuff to do. That was my bottle clicking. Quote, a very great wine. What? I'm working in a language cafe and I actually hate calling it work because it really doesn't feel like work. What my work entails is I speak one-on-one -on -one with a Korean person who is trying to learn English or trying to better their English in English. For 50 minutes, I get a 10 minute break and then I would technically have to talk to another person learning English. The thing is though, we don't have that many people currently coming to our cafe. So basically I work for two hours and then that's it. But I'm just in the cafe. I usually bring like notebooks with me so I can like write down video ideas or I'll be studying Korean. Some of my friends are just on their phones or somebody even brought their laptop and watched K-drama. It's, it's like, it's really Really chill. Uh, yeah. How? Basically, I lost my job. I had nothing stopping me. Staying unemployed in Switzerland is really freaking expensive. And I had the money for a really good reason. The original plan was to go to Korea in 2020, but the thing is my company decided that, oh yeah, we really actually can't afford you anymore. So we kind of have to let you go. And that was back in uh, April. Yeah, lost my job in April, came to Korea literally a month later. And now I've been here for almost a month. How did I find this opportunity? I was tweeting about wanting to go to Korea and staying there for a longer time and somebody who watches my videos but also follows me on Twitter replied with Oh, why don't you look at Workaway? It's a website where you can do various jobs around the globe You can usually stay there for free That was uh, quite a while before any of this even happened When I lost my job, that thought, instead of being at the back of my mind, kind of came to the front And I looked it up and I spent so much time researching I made a whole as timetable of where to go at what times, different categories for different things to do in Korea, different workaways. But ultimately I landed in Daegu because Seoul was completely booked out. I didn't really want to go to Busan yet. I don't know why. I was just like, I don't want to go to a seaside town. And I heard that the 
dialect is really strong and I don't want to deal with that. Like I just want to learn Korean and be happy. Daegu was definitely not my first choice. The more time I'm spending in Daegu, the more I'm starting to actually love the city. If you would like me to make a video comparing Seoul to Daegu, then please let me know and I'll be glad to make that. I've already started a mental list of things that are different. To conclude this section, I'm just gonna say that work doesn't feel like work. It just kind of feels like you're practicing socializing. My flat weights are 10 out of 10. They're a hilarious bunch and I actually really like them. When I was first researching about doing a work away, I kind of was worried the other work awayers might be weird or like that something would just be off. All the other work awayers are 10 out of 10 great people. So let's get to the Q&A part of the section, shall we? Okay, so first question was, how many places are you going to go to all together? And the answer to that is, I don't know. I don't know how many places I'm gonna go to. I know that I definitely need to leave Korea for a day at least because visa expiry, but yeah, like I will need to leave Korea for like a bit, but I might just pop over to Japan, stay there for a day or maybe three. I don't know. But the thing is Japan is expensive, so the less time I spend there, the better. <laughs> are you selling your right? Yes. Thank you, I am. The people are very kind. The work awares are 10 out of 10 cool people, as I've already mentioned, and the food is great. Which path did you choose? Language cafe or university? I feel like that question's kind of been answered with this video. I'm pretty sure in the video it wasn't exactly clear, but I did choose the language cafe because ultimately 2000 bucks on like a language university wasn't really worth it for me because I wasn't gonna get a university degree. I was just gonna be doing a university language course. So basically language lessons at a university and at also then still have to pay for visa fees and then I'd also have to pay for key money when renting an apartment because in Korea you have to put like a big 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 deposit down before you can even rent a place so that would have been like ten thousand dollars just gone you do get it back though you do get it back that's not that's not the worry but like it's still a lot of money just out of your bank account and that's like that's quite worrisome but then I'd also have to pay for rent and this way I am not paying for rent. I don't get paid to work at the language cafe, but I get free accommodation. Living costs so far, food and transportation. Uh, that's a good question. I actually have no idea. I haven't really budgeted anything. I just kind of live day to day. And the thing is, the beautiful thing is, I don't really have to like look at my money and be like very worried about it because I've saved up enough so that I don't really have to budget. I know that I should budget, but I don't really do it. Oops. The thing is living costs in Korea are so much cheaper than in Switzerland, like it's so chill. Do you have a different attitude to how you spend your time now compared to previous visits? I would say absolutely and definitely. The last times I always felt like I have to do everything very, very fast and get everything over with, see as much as possible, film as much as possible, take photos of as many things as possible because I was gonna leave again in two weeks. I've been here for a month and in the beginning, I was very much like I need to see everything that there is, but then I realized, hold on, I'm gonna be here for a while. I don't need to hurry. I don't need to see everything within two weeks and then I'm gonna be leaving the country again because I'm not gonna be leaving the country again for like a while. I've slowed down my pace. I feel a lot less stressed to do and see everything. Are the buildings better equipped to deal with the heat than back in Europe? Daegu is known as the hottest city in Korea and if you know anything about me you'll know that I actually don't like summer and I don't like heat and I don't like sweating and I just I basically I don't like summer so when I found out that Daegu is known as like the hottest city in Korea I was very much like fuck all of my shirts are kind of long sleeved all of my clothes are black I don't own a skirt or shorts I only own black skinny jeans and most of my shirts are also black I've got like one shirt that's white, but it's long sleeved. And so I was kind of like, oh shit, <laughs> what the fuck did I get myself into? But so far it's not been super bad. Staying here for a month, I've kind of gotten a strategy of how I go about <laughs> to go to places. Basically you walk and as soon as you see a convenience store, you go inside, you spend five minutes in there to cool down and then you go outside again. And as soon as you see another one, same thing. Rinse and repeat until you're at your end destination. It definitely takes more time to get there, but you also don't die in the sweltering heat. When I first arrived, we didn't have air conditioning. I had to sleep for three days in the sweltering heat and opening the windows doesn't really do anything. I think about three or four days into my stay, we got air conditioning and so I was like, Sweet baby Jesus, thank you. Have you spoken in Korean with others? I try to speak Korean every single day, whether it be in real life or just on apps. The apps mainly being Hello Talk. Yeah, I try to speak Korean every single day. And the thing is, like, I can do small talk. I mostly know what they're trying to say. Even if I don't fully 100% understand it, but I can feel myself getting better or like at least I'm building up vocab. And I found that Hello Talk is actually really fun. But yeah, definitely I'm trying to have conversations with as many people as I can in Korean. Mostly, I'm 
having conversations with people in 7-Elevens and convenience stores. <laughs> it's also really fun if you do it like really late at night because then they're like, oh, I'm really bored otherwise. So yay, somebody's talking to me. And if they see that I'm like trying to make an effort, they are even more happy. Are you going to any concerts? I was looking up concerts when I found this question. Um, the only thing that I found was a 10 centimeter concert. The thing is that concert was kind of more of a festival. The only person that I knew that was going to be in the festival was 10 centimeter and I kind of didn't want to spend 70 bucks to see him. But yeah, like if I get the chance to, definitely. But Daegu isn't exactly the concert hotspot of Korea. Are you now working in Korea? Yeah, but it's more volunteering instead of working because I don't get paid. My payment is free accommodation in a dorm. Dorm. Like it's a flat, but there's bunk beds and we get free rice, free bread, cooking oil, salt, sugar, that kind of thing. Do you already have a favorite spot? Not yet, not really. I don't really think I have a favorite spot yet. I really like Songdongmon, which I made a video about, but in the future, I'm also planning on making a video about different cafes and one of my favorites is definitely gonna be in there. I have like three that I really, really love. That's all just gonna be in that video because that's <laughs> gonna be a lot easier and I'm gonna have like addresses in the description and on the video. So, you know, if you wanna visit, you can visit them. Are you noticing any big differences from Switzerland to Korea? Funnily enough, the biggest thing that I find a difference with is the fact that I have to wait for so long at streetlights. Sounds really petty and like a really stupid thing, but streetlight waits are so long in Korea. It's insane. In Switzerland, every 30 seconds or so, the light will go red for the cars and green for the people who are walking. What is that word? There's a word for that and I cannot remember. Basically, I have to wait for fucking three minutes just to be able to cross a, like a zebra crossing and it's so annoying. <laughs> One of my friends mentioned that they, she hasn't really seen a lot of roundabouts and uh, that that would probably help solve this problem of endless waits. And those are all the questions which also means that this is the end of the video. So this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can stick around till when I make a new one. I hope you drink lots of water, get lots of sleep, and this is the end. Bye.